Is this a reversal or is the market going to continue? Is this the ICT 2022 model or is the market, is the market going to create a fair value gap? Now, this is the common thought process that most of you are going down every single day after the market opens. And you sit there and you don't know which liquidity to target and which liquidity is going to give you a reversal. And this is pretty important to know, especially if you're trading ICT, because everything revolves around liquidity. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to determine whether price is either sweeping liquidity and going to reverse or whether it's going to continue and create a fair value gap and give you a continuation. Now, the good news is there is a trade in both of these opportunities. The key is just understanding which is happening while it's happening. After this video, you're going to be able to make more consistent and confident decisions. Because when you look at the market and you see it trading through structure, if the market has formed a consolidation and you see us popping into a point of liquidity, many of you guys are very eager at this time. You're sitting there in front of the screens, physically tense, watching, waiting to see if the market's going to reverse, to see if your entry model is going to be presented. But we all know that your entry model doesn't really mean much if you're on the wrong side of the market. And that is why daily bias is such a highly discussed topic in the world of ICT. And the truth is, you don't necessarily need a daily bias if you're good at what I'm about to teach you. It's going to help you with consistent and confident decision making, and it's going to also help you take less unnecessary losses. Because when the market is here and you zoom into your one minute time frame, there's a lot of times where you're going to get this nice little entry pattern, the ICT 2022, and it doesn't work. And the market's going to maybe come up in the fair value gap, hang out, and then stop you out. So that's when you see the market have these big massive runs while you're sidelined waiting for an opportunity, waiting for a liquidity sweep. And everybody in ICT always just wants to trade reversals. Nobody talks about how do you trade a continuation. Now, this is also going to give you a complete change in your routine. Because whenever you come to the market, you sit down and you're watching the screens and you're so tense and you're just sitting there waiting for the first high to get swept, you're not really in the best trading routine. I think we can all agree on that. Today, I'm going to help you change that routine to something a little bit more sensible and systematic. That way that you're able to, when you get in front of the screen, there's no guesswork, there's no stress, and you know exactly what you're looking for. Now, this is also going to help you get a higher win rate because when we know when the market is going to reverse versus when it's going to continue, you're going to be able to save yourself from taking a lot of bad trades. Now, I want you to think about something for just one second. Think about the last 100 losses you took. Now, if you eliminated just half of those, would you be a profitable trader? My guess is yes. So when it comes to why this is so important, it's not so much about always just catching more trades or getting more opportunities. What it really comes down to is patching the holes in your trading system. I want you to think about a bucket of water. If we're pouring water into this bucket endlessly, we can turn the, the water up, we can pour as much water as we want into this bucket, but if it has holes, then it always will dry up. And this is the same for your trading strategy, because if you are taking a lot of unnecessary losses and your win rate is lower than it needs to be, that alone could be the thing standing between you and being a profitable trader. And another huge, huge advantage to understanding when the market's going to reverse versus when it's going to continue is going to be just the way that you feel while you're trading. Now, most of you guys ask me, how do I get confidence? How do I find consistency? And the truth is, a lot of you guys probably shouldn't be confident because you don't have a system. But once you have a system that is proven and you have rational confidence, meaning you've watched it play out multiple times, time and time again, then trading isn't as stressful or as hard as most people make it out to be. In today's video, I'm going to help you with all of this. And by the end of this, you're going to have a systematic approach on how to tell if the market is going to reverse or if it's going to continue or if it's going to sweep liquidity or if it's going to give a liquidity run. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a chart. So the way that we want to look at price is if it is bullish, what should it be doing? If it's bearish, what should it be doing? If the market is bullish, so if we are bullish, we want to make sure that the market is reacting to lows in a certain way. So just think of bullish and always just think of lows, right? Because we're looking to see how the market is reacting through lows. So when we look over here, let's just watch a couple different examples. So we have a swing low right here, right? And this candle has a higher low on either side. Notice how the market just barely pips under it and then it rockets to the upside. So when we see this kind of price action, when the market is manipulating lows, when the market is just barely tapping into a low and then rushing to the upside, that is bullish. So 
the idea behind this is that if we're trading smart money, if we're trading ICT, you're going to be looking at the market in consolidations. And let's say if a large market participant wants to get into the market and there are not enough orders for them to get in, meaning that there is liquidity down under this range, under all the lows, we want to see the market push into lows. Because if a large force is trying to buy, meaning we're going to be bullish, it takes large forces to move the market, then we are going to want to see the market rush below lows. Because the market, if, if we're looking at it to be bullish, we need to see big forces entering in the market. And those big forces entering in the market need liquidity. So we want to see how they react to these lows. Now, if there is a lot of you know, shares or contracts for sale all down this level, what we're going to see if the market is bullish is upwards movement pretty rapidly. Because in a bullish market, when prices come down to where there's a lot for sale, what happens? Let's just take the housing market. If the housing market was extremely bullish, if interest rates were very, very low and housing prices plummeted, they would get bought up overnight because investors know that this is a good opportunity. So you have to look at the markets in the same way. So if the market is coming under lows and it is bullish, we should see a sharp reaction because the market is getting bought up. The large market participants understand that this is an opportunity. So when we look at this bit of price action over here, notice how the market barely comes under. It doesn't even form a candle body. That means that the market didn't even close that candle under this low. That means that the market is bullish at that time. Now let's take a look right here. We have established that when the market manipulates lows, the market is bullish and it's likely to move up. But where is it going to move up to? Well, anytime the market manipulates a low right here, we want to look to see where the next high is that kind of pushed it there. So, so in this example, if we manipulate this low, meaning the market traded into it, failed to displace or failed to get a big push through it, that means that the large market participants were buying up the orders right there. So where are we going? Well, we're going to look to the opposing high that sent it there. But notice the reaction that happens with this high. So when we look at this high, what happens? Well, the market definitely doesn't manipulate it. It pushes abruptly through it, right? So we push through it. And the important thing here is we close a candle body far beyond it and we create a fair value gap. Now, a fair value gap is just a gap between the first wick right here. So notice how we have this expansive candle. There's a wick and there's a huge body and then the other wick doesn't start to all the way up here. And what that leaves is this gap. So that's a fair value gap. Anytime the market creates a fair value gap through a point of structure, it's likely to continue. Now, where is it likely to continue? Well, you want to see where the market kind of tops out at and forms a high. So if you see here, the market did end up continuing and trading into that high. But what happened? Then the market manipulated the highs. What we want to focus on here is how is the market reacting to highs and lows. So if the market is manipulating lows and displacing through highs, it is bullish. If the market manipulates this high, that means that there were a lot of orders above these highs. There were buy orders. Now these could be in the stop losses of shorts or people looking to buy the breakout. And then large market participants did what? large market participants sold above that high. And that is what you're able to visualize as the market manipulates a high. The way that we react to lows and highs tells you everything you need to know. So you want to watch, are we manipulating or are we displacing? If we're manipulating lows, we're likely to go higher. If we're displacing through highs, we're likely to go higher. So anytime you have a manipulation, this is going to yield a reversal. And anytime you have a displacement, meaning you push through a point of structure with a fair value gap, that means that the market is likely to continue. This would be a liquidity sweep because it's a reversal. The market is just sweeping that liquidity and going to go higher. And then this would be a liquidity run because the market is going to continue to run. But if we look here at this example, we have a reversal right here that moves to the upside. We get a continuation, so we expect to go to the next swing point. It's all about the next swing point. 
if this high fails to displace and create a new low, it will be targeted. Just like right here, if the market comes up above that high and it fails to displace, the local target we can look at is just this low. So if this is a higher time frame, you can then scale into a lower time frame and look for an entry model, meaning just a market structure shift or a manipulation versus displacement. See why ICT created these things this way. That's gonna take you, if you're on the lower time frame, you can trade this whole move. So let's take a look at the rest of this price action and show you how you can implement this into your trading. After this, we manipulate this high and we displace lower, creating a fair value gap. So we're expecting the market to come back into this and then trade where? Trade down lower into all of this down here. What does the market do? If we look over to this area, the market comes up into this fair value gap, right? But there is structure that forms within it. So whenever you have these large ranges, you're gonna have structure form within it and you're gonna have more manipulations and displacements. So let's just take a look at all the examples of where you could have used this just on this one chart. And this is just using, I think it was a 15 minute on NASDAQ and you can just see how powerful this is. Right here, we manipulated all these lows. So what? We are expecting to go higher. And then right here, we displaced through this high. So we formed a fair value gap and the market did what? Ended up going higher. On top of that, we're gonna look over here. What happened right there? When the market did trade into that high, right here, the market just manipulated it. It didn't displace. So we're expecting what? The market to trade down lower. Every single one of these pivots is a tradable move on the low time frame. So then we're looking over here. What do we have? The market manipulating a high and then going lower. So as soon as it manipulated this high, what's the low that sent it there? Right there. So this down move is tradable. And trust me, on a lower time frame, there's a lot of money to be had in that. That's about a 100 point move in NASDAQ. A 100 point move, $20 per contract, do the math. That's $2,000 in profit per contract that you could have caught from that move. So these may look like small moves, but if you're able to extract the value from them on a lower time frame using the strategy I'm about to teach you in a second, then you can make a lot of money trading just this alone. Notice right here, we manipulate a high, and then where do we go? Down to the low, okay? So you can see how this repeats itself over and over and over again. Now that we have a foundation and understand manipulation versus displacement, which is just my strategy for spotting liquidity sweeps, aka reversals, versus liquidity runs, aka continuations. Now that we've built this foundation, I'm gonna teach you a systematic trading strategy on how you can implement this into your trading and start making money using this concept today. But first, let's go ahead and review. So manipulation, all this means is a lack of displacement. So if the market is trading into a structure point and it's not really pushing past it, not creating fair value gaps, it's likely to reverse. This goes for either highs or lows. So anytime you manipulate, that is likely a liquidity sweep in somewhere that you wanna be looking on the lower time frame for a market structure shift. Next, let's talk about displacement. All displacement is, is a large energetic push. And for those of you who've been following me for any amount of time, you know that this is the cornerstone to my methodology of trading, which is responsive displacement-based trading. Displacement can tell you everything that you need to know into the market, whether it's market structure, your entries, daily bias, Every single thing that you're using is going to come back to displacement. Because when we're trading price action, what are we essentially trying to do? We're trying to see the market's intentions through the structure, through the energy of the candles. And who are the candles created by? Who, how is this price action, how does it move? Well, it moves by large forces entering the market. We can all agree that the markets are manipulated and that there are big dogs that are pushing the markets. Displacement is how we see those entities trading in the market. And anytime we see displacement, we're going to expect a continuation. So remember, manipulation equals reversal. Displacement equals continuation, okay? And a liquidity sweep is just another word for manipulation. A liquidity run is just another word for displacement. I like simplifying things. Liquidity sweep and liquidity run, those are fancy terms. The market's either manipulating or it's displacing. Now this information alone is pretty useful. I mean, now you understand how to tell when the market is gonna manipulate or reverse or when it's gonna continue. But when you pair this consistently with a step-by-step -step strategy to implement it, this becomes extremely powerful. And once you see this, you will never unsee it. 
Now we are going to talk about how to implement. Now I want you guys to follow this exactly as I tell it to you. You have to follow this exactly as I tell you or it won't work. I get a lot of comments on my videos, people trying to change the strategies that I'm teaching them. Don't do that. Just do what I'm telling you to do. It's very simple. We are going to look for higher time frame displacements. In this example, the market had came up and displaced through a high, creating a fair value gap. When we have identified what the higher time frame is doing, is the higher time frame displacing or is it manipulating? Once you identify that, you know that the higher time frame is likely to continue. On the lower time frame, you're going to be watching to confirm this move. So step one is just your higher time frame. This right here, you see this box is your higher time frame level, right? All this in here, this is your higher time frame level, which is this fair value gap you see right here. So what you want to focus on is how is the market reacting in this level? So a good rule of thumb to remember that your higher time frame should always equal your lower time frame. This is how you get higher probability conditions. So many people want to just trade this. They just want to wait for their lower time frame entry model, and this will not work. You will lose money doing this. I don't know how many times you have to be told this, but using the one minute alone is not going to work. And you also need to make sure that you're using the right time frames together. And I'm going to give you a cheat sheet on how to do that here in a second. But for now, I want you to focus on this. If your higher time frame, remember your higher time frame at this point has told you that we're going to be bullish. It's told you that the market is going to move to the upside. Okay. So if the market's going to move to the upside, when we're in this area, when we came down into this fair value gap, what you're going to look for is the same thing. You're going to look for a confirmation. So how do we confirm when the market is reversing and when it's going to continue? Remember manipulation and displacement. On this lower time frame, you're going to wait until you see a clear manipulation accompanied with the displacement. Notice right here, we might have a little bit of a manipulation right there. The market came under a low and then what? Did it displace to the upside? No. So that's not your reversal. Same thing here. The market came under a low. Did it displace to the upside? No, that's not your reversal because you're not going to just use manipulation alone or just displacement alone on your lower time frame. Because in the lower time frame, you always want to make sure that you're really patient and that things are extremely clear. Now, then look, we have a displacement to the upside right here. But is that all we're going to require in order to get into a trade? No, we're not going to use just a displacement. What we want to wait for is a manipulation plus a displacement. So if you look right here, the market then comes down into a low and it displaces right there. So as soon as this candle closes, as soon as this candle after that displacement candle closes, that confirmed there is a fair value gap. At this moment, you can enter the trade right there and then put your stop under the low that manipulated the other low. Okay. So let's re let's re go over that just a little bit to make sure we're clear. You have to have your higher time frame equal to your lower time frame. Now, how do we confirm this? Well, you're going to want to have manipulation or displacement on your higher time frame, but you want to have manipulation and displacement on your lower time frame. We had a displacement here that alone isn't what we're going to use. Now, yes, sure. In this example, it would have given you a better entry, but we're more focused on making money over time rather than trying to get the tops or bottoms. We want to wait for confirmation. So right here, we come down under this low and then what displace. And how do we confirm a displacement? That's right. A fair value gap. So we form that fair value gap. And as soon as that is formed, you don't have to wait for the market to tap into it. You enter the trade and what you're going to target is you're going to go back to that higher time frame and you're going to target the overall original target. Because if we're looking at this higher time frame, where are we expecting the market to go? Remember in a liquidity run, meaning the market came up, took a high and had a displacement, leaving a fair value gap. Once we trade under that fair value gap, we're expecting it to go to the next high. Right, because that is where this strategy points to. So that's going to be all the way up here above that consolidation. So you were able to get into the market right there with a stop loss right there and target this. That's a lot of risk to reward, but it gets even better because once this occurs, what you have just confirmed is that the market is now in a market maker model.
And in a market maker model, what you're able to do is that same exact strategy anytime after the first switch happens. Because after that right there, the market's now switched. The market is now on a stair step up. And even if it comes down and falls down one stair, it's gonna go back up. And that is where you look for manipulation and then more displacement. So if you look, this occurs a number of times through this segment of price action. But the good news is after that first switch, you don't have to have both manipulation and displacement. You can just use one or the other because now you've confirmed that that higher time frame equals your lower time frame. The only reason you're patient with this first switch is because it's a reversal. And if there's one lesson I can teach you on this channel, it's to be careful trying to catch a falling knife. Meaning, make sure that you're patient when trading reversals because it's really easy to brainwash yourself into the fact that the market's reversing every single time. And when you do that, you take unnecessary losses. So if we look right here, what do we have? We have a displacement. Okay, so when the market displaces up right there, that gives us a fair value gap. That's a trade entry, right? Maybe I should put a check. So you know, that's a good trade entry right there. Anytime the market manipulates right here, that is a trade entry. So you can see that the market is gonna continuously give you trades throughout that entire bit of price action. Now, there is one area right here where you would have taken a loss, and I always like to highlight that because a lot of YouTube videos you see, they're just gonna show you the wins and make you think that a strategy is perfect, and if you take a loss, that you must be doing something wrong. And that's not how trading works, and I'm here to teach you how to actually trade. So I wanna show you this. There's gonna be losses with this strategy. As with anything you learn anywhere, there are losses. So here is one loss, right? Then you look, there's another win right here because we have manipulation. There's any time you have a strategy, you're going to have multiple wins and multiple losses, okay? But the key is just winning more than you lose and winning bigger than you lose as well. So if we see here in just this one bit of price action, this was a 15 minute to a one minute chart. There are tons of opportunities tons of opportunities. So you've got an opportunity right here. So one, two, three, four winning trade opportunities and then one loss. Now you shouldn't go to try to take all of these of course, but just to show you that once you understand this concept, trading becomes clear and simple overnight because you understand that the market is just moving from one area on the higher time frame to the other and the lower time frame is just how you dissect it. The alignment is gonna be very, very important. What I want you guys to focus on for this strategy is using these time frames on the right, these last two time frames. So if you're looking at, let's say you're a lower time frame trader, which most of you guys are, if you're trading prop firms, you're probably trading the M15 and the M1. Let's just say if the M15 is displacing, you're gonna look for the market to trade under that 15 minute fair value gap, and then look for the one minute manipulation plus displacement. But you could do this with any pairing of time frames in any market. Price is price. You can also do this on the higher time frame. Let's say if the market moves into a low and it manipulates it, you can then look to the lower time frame to look for that same manipulation versus displacement. It's the same thing. You're just using the higher time frame as a tool to tell you where the market's going to go and then using the lower time frame to actually make money from it. For those of you who are serious about trading, I do have a program where I guarantee that you become a funded trader in 12 weeks of working with me. I'll leave a link down in the description to that for those of you who want to work more directly with me. I'll trade live with you, review all your trades, tons of cool stuff. I'll leave the link down in the description and if you qualify, I guarantee your results. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave in the comments some kind of topics that you want me to go over and I'll see you guys in the next one.